are the majority. Don't let them lie to you. Don't let them divide you. Been playing this game and the score's 98 to 2. Oh, la, 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 la. Hi, my name is Kaneem Mafa, which means King, Queen, Mother, Father. We are out here again. We've been notified that this is LGBTQIA History Month. And again, you know, we want to um, embrace the idea that it's our story, that it's her history, that it's not just us doing the same thing that our founding fathers have done. We're going to hear an amazing story from Lynn Morrison, who is the mother of the trans, the National Trans March of Visibility. She is doing amazing work. Um, I've had a chance to be here with her and watch her go to the hospital to check on her sisters. Um, hosting events for us to get together and storytell and collectively heal and empower one another. She's also created a chat where we can, you know, work out our differences and resolve conflicts and communicate to each other about events and things that are coming up. We're taking this time to tell our story. I'm always eager and excited to highlight a story from Antron. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Antron Richard Uluka Lude. She was an amazing artist who was an advocate for HIV, black people living with HIV, queer people. He created folklore art. He was a poet, a published author. He was a producer, an editor, a dancer, a singer, a one being production company. Courageous, high spirited, beautiful. Hi, my name is Lynn Morrison, and I'm the mother of the National Trans Visibility March, and I want to talk about my child, Antron. Finally, to, to true to form words about his existence here on this planet. Um, I can recall the times where I was in a bad place, really bad. I had a nervous breakdown, didn't know what it was at the time, and Antron was there for me. From that moment on, he was there for me. He comforted me. He held me while I cried for damn near eight hours straight. Didn't know why. Um, he was always a comfort. He was always a joy, a spirit. You know, Antron was non-binary before non-binary was a word. You know. He didn't feel, he didn't fit into, you know, the masculine category, you know. He didn't fit, you know, the total woman category, but he was definitely a girl and definitely a boy. And why do you think Antron didn't identify as, as non-binary? Why do you think Antron continued to identify for the most part as a black gay man? Because Antron won acceptance from the, from the black gay male community. He wanted to be looked as an equal to one of them. But he was not a traditional, typical gay man, as I would say, you know. Do you feel like the black gay community was always welcoming to Antron? No, they were not always welcome to, to, to Antron. They kind of shunned him to make him feel like he was not worthy or adequate enough to fit in their spaces but he would always fight and claw his way in to make his presence be known. And because I checked him, and because I told him no, he decided mm -hmm. he wanted to start fighting me. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah, here we go. see, wow. these scars right here. Mm -hmm. um, had a contortion on my head, had to go to the hospital, mm -hmm. everything. And you know, I was so angry, mm -hmm. you know, for a lot of things. When you're easy, you're not respected, mm -hmm. and and therefore you're easy. Say but it. when you're Say not it. easy, mm -hmm. because you're not easy, you're disrespected. Mm -hmm. So it's a catch twenty two. Yes. <laughs> it's like, what do you guys want? And I was so angry because 
the very people that I fight for and I advocate for and I love with such a heated passion hurts me the most. It hurts my heart because my black gay men, I love them so much, but they get on my fucking nerves <laughs> with, it, with their misogyny, misogyny, with their privilege. Oh, because I'm masculine and I want to fuck you. I'm going to treat you in a kind of way because I'm a commodity in this city. There's 20 bottoms to one top in Atlanta. Mm, damn. So you wanted to see you know, especially the trans community to be uplifted, to be more recognized, to be respected more. Oh, it was to the 10th power. <laughs> to the 10th power. He was definitely a champion in that aspect. He was definitely an ally in that aspect. He was definitely a warrior in that aspect as well. He, he asked me to be his black trans gay mother, and he had a biological mom. Um, the strongest people I know are women, like my mother, for instance. You know, she raised two boys, but myself and my brother. Uh, Jarvis by herself um, without really much of a father figure uh, even though my brother's father was around you know she did the majority of the work by herself and you know my grandmother and you know and my aunt and my cousins you know very strong women you know listening to their stories and you know especially my grandmother listening to her about when she was a young woman back in the early 30s 40s um, 50s and you know the way the things that she had seen and i i have this uh i have love for women that you know i too am a part of their struggle because it's my struggle um because i believe they are more than entitled to have the rights that they deserve and and because it's just that it's a given right um but i i view women to be very beautiful i i'm an advocate for women's rights I, you know, I speak up and I speak out for women, um, and I respect women to the utmost because without those powerful women in my life, I don't think I would be the man that I am today. So, I love you guys. I love you gals, rather. But he saw the need to have a, a trans mother as well navigating within the, the LGBT community, that he would need support, he would need a mother figure so he can come to talk to cry on their shoulder if need be, get advice if he need be, if he need a hug if he needed one, if he needed to eat and get a meal, just just generally support him and whatever he was doing, because he supported me in whatever I was doing. Do you think Antoine would be happy with how the movement is going now with black people? Do you th How do you think Antoine would feel about Kamala being running for president? I don't think he'd be pleased, because I don't think he would... He would also, like everyone else, believe she's not black. He probably would have voted for her as a, as a woman because at the same time, he's tired of the male patriarchy, the white male patriarchy, being you know at the head of the White House, always making the decisions. I think he would be glad that there's a woman, of, of some female energy running through the place for a change, whether, whether she's black, Indian, or what have you. But I, I think he would be displeased with the fact that she has to lie about her nationality and who she is to run for president. If you could say one thing to Antron, if you got a chance to say one thing to Antron that you feel like you didn't get a chance to say, what would it be? I love you. I love you. Mama, mama misses you. I wish I could have been there to hold your hand, hug you, kiss you one last time, and even just be there for you as a source of comfort in your life at that, at that time of need. I was so hurt when I found out that he had passed. I just did not know that it was to that extreme at the time and wouldn't nobody give me no information about what was going on. But I want, I want to say to him, I love you. Your presence in my life was valuable. It was, it, it was needed. I needed you at the time and you needed me. And I just hate that we don't have more memories to, to, to share, especially now with me living in New York and knowing back then that was your dream and your passion just to live here and now you know me you, you know me and Kaneen is now living here in New York and it's also real that you know I just wish she was here. Like Lynn said um, Antoine was non-binary before non-binary was a thing and so I'm just excited to be here with the mother of the march and to have her to document her story and her experience of Antoine because you know, while the machine is painting narratives to us, telling us 
who our heritage is and who we're supposed to respect and who we're supposed to celebrate and who we're supposed to acknowledge, it's important that we have our own minds and we can think for ourselves and we can choose to embody and uplift the people who resonate with us the most. And Antoine is definitely a being who resonated with us. Until they left this earth, they lived below, below the poverty line and were a genius. Could have marketed themselves in a different way, could have used their gifts to tell different stories, but it was more important to them to be loyal to what they believed in and to keep that integrity. I think that it was Buddhism that kept Antron around as long as Antron stayed around. If Antron would have stayed a part of the Christian faith, Antron probably would have left a lot sooner. But, you know, attaching themselves to the um, Buddhist faith was what kept them around longer, the chanting. And so, you know, that is definitely one of my foremothers, forefathers, ancestors. They, they never got a chance to hear the word lay lim lay lark. They never got a chance to witness this spirituality that speaks about the mother and the father and being whole. But I, I know that they would have heard. I'm thankful to be in this space and to be able to remember Antron and celebrate Antron. To move forward as a people collectively and to be able to tell the stories of our generation, generations that are coming, and generations that precede us. Amen, a woman, a lay limb, lay purple ones rise.